now we're gonna do the hunter pvp guide consumables um talents what else uh, gear right and i guess some kind of combos maybe macros um right now i mean my hunter doesn't have much pvp gear or enchants right i don't really have i'm just pretty much normal gear farming gear whatever uh, that's the main way to make gold right if you ever need gold to make uh, on Hunter, it's either Dire Maul or Maraudon. Uh, if you're really skilled, you probably do Dire Maul. If you wanna be less, I mean, if you're if new to Hunter, if you don't have much gear, if you wanna be more chill, then you go with Maraudon. Maraudon is more like an autopilot farm. You don't really need to pay attention to the game while farming Maraudon, while Dire Maul, you need to be constantly paying attention. Anyways, um going in with talent specs right uh, let's go i don't know this talent calculator hunter right i'm actually gonna do it with wow head wow head classic okay tools talent calculator hunter nice um there's many pvp specs i think people is looking for a phase two spec so I kind of went on this yesterday a little bit, I'm gonna go on it again, right? Phase 2 is more gonna be about chasing people or running away from people. It's not as much like you need the damage, the constant damage output, you just need... Um, what's the name? Uh, yeah, to be like, you need mobility and you need CC, right? So. What do you want to pick from this? Of course, you want to pick improved concussive shot, that's a must for PvP. You want to go 5 on lethal shots. Um, you want to go aim shot. Uh, you want to aim shot. You want to go Hawkeye for the improved, uh, improved range. Uh, this is kind of whatever. You can put it in Hunter's Mark. You can put it on uh, efficiency. I like to put it on efficiency because uh, Hunter's Mark, you're barely using it. You're only using it when you're locking down a target or your target is very far away. Right, so yeah, that's my choice. Then you wanna put five points. I mean, it's kind of standard uh, setup for now, right? For talents, and you wanna have scatter. You're gonna get some multi shot, and that's pretty much what you're gonna go for maxman. Okay, why we only want 24 points of maxmanship? Because again, we're gonna be chasing people down. This is just damage. This is even more damage. Okay, uh, this is damage, but this is kind of one of the basic abilities you're gonna be using while fighting people, you're not gonna be made. Aim shot, you're gonna be only using it when you're locking people down. So, your multi shot and arcade shot are gonna be, and auto shot are gonna be your main sources of damage. You're barely gonna be using aim shot. Again, you only use aim shot when you have a target locked down. And then, what you wanna do here, you probably wanna get some. Uh, your Hawk procs is not really needed because, again, it's mostly gonna be in cheetah spec, I mean stuns, but let's say you get a lockdown on a target, you can switch to hawk and you can get maybe some procs, it's like rapid fire, right? Mini rapid fire, pretty solid. If you don't like this, if you don't feel like you're gonna use this, then just put them on, on HP for pet. Your pet may die at some point, so it's just put the uh, improved revive pet. Then uh, rest of the talents, you can either put a monkey. Monkey is pretty solid because if you get a rogue on you, a warrior on you, I mean, warrior is kind of a fire effect because you're gonna get, uh, if you dodge, you're gonna get free overpowers for him. But yeah, I mean, if you dodge a mortal strike, I, would, I think it's worth it, right? So yeah. If you dodge a hamstring, I mean, even if you dodge a hamstring, it's good because sometimes you dodge a hamstring and you get enough range when just dodging the first hamstring. So then a global cannot slow you, right? So it's up to you. I usually put some HP on the bed, and that's pretty much it, right? And then we go with pathfinding, we go with bestial swiftness. Uh, rest of the points, you can put them, whatever. Again, you can complete monkey, right? Like, let's say you have two extra points. You could put five points on monkey instead of three points in here, right? Five points on monkey just to go to the next talent part of the tree, which is the most important one, right? Improve man pet, improve man pet. How does this uh, thing work? So, uh, improve man pet can dispel your pet. 50% uh, chance on every tick. 
uh, doesn't matter if it's rank 1 or, the, or if it's max rank, so it's very, very useful. Um, I'm gonna talk about it later, but it's very situational, but again, it's very, very useful. If you're fighting Warlock, if you're fighting Priest, if you're fighting Mage, fighting Druid, whatever, you need your pet to get away from CC. Uh, because you want to pick information, right? And you don't have this still that. You're not gonna have this still that. So improvement pet is pretty much the dispel button for your pet. Then um, uh, either one of those, uh, unleash fury or ferocity. I don't really care much. Probably ferocity is better, but yeah, it's whatever. You just want to get intimidation, right? And uh, there's few points left. I don't know how many. Six points left, right? Humanoid slaying is a must. Right, because you're gonna kill, be killing humanoid people. I mean, he, it affects the PvP, right? So you're gonna be doing pretty much 3% extra damage. You and your pet are gonna be doing 3% extra damage, and you and your pet are gonna be doing 3% extra damage increase as well, right? So it's a lot of damage increase. Uh, probably not gonna make a difference, but it's really, really helpful. So what else do you can can you select? Uh, you can put points on spirit bond. Spirit bomb is very solid, especially when you're like constantly fighting people, right? Uh, it's gonna help you when your pet regen faster, right? As long as your pet is out. If you are playing without pet, uh, you're not gonna have this buff. So you kind of want to have your pet out most of the time. It's really, really helpful. Can help you in a clutch situation. It's a little bit of HP you get, right? And yeah. Uh, you can either put those here, or you can just complete more damage on pet, more damage on pet again, more HP on pet, more armor on pet. You can do whatever, right? Or you can just put parry. It still works, right? You can just put five points, on, uh, three points on parry. It's kind of whatever. You can just put two points on parry, get improved wing cleave, chance to like, you know, get the wing cleave off. But again, you're only wing cleaving warriors and rogues. You're not gonna. You're barely gonna be wing clipping mages or warlocks or any other class in the game, so it's super situational. Uh, so usually I would go for this. I would go for spirit bond and then probably either parry or either like you know these monkey points. I would put them probably on on pet HP, whatever. We'll see though. That's that's pretty much for phase two, right? Right. This is my personal choice for phase two. Right, I would choose this because again, you're gonna be chasing down people, you're gonna be running away from people, you're not gonna be doing constant damage, etc. etc. Right, so you wanna be pretty much, uh, I mean, this is like just in case, but right, like you know, survive against warriors, rogues. Same with these, you know, it gives you more chances to survive, but it's not a guarantee, right. You can also get some points on uh, improved Scorpion Sting. Scorpion Sting is very nice as well because. It's pretty much gonna reduce stamina. I believe it's um, max rank is 48, right? Uh, Scorpion Sting, it's 48, 45, 68. Sorry. So you're pretty much gonna be reducing on uh, physical damage guy. You're gonna be reducing their crit by about three and a half percent, their damage by a lot, and also their stamina. Okay. It, Applies to everything, Scorpion Sting is very, very good. Uh, even when you pretty much your Viper Stinging or Serpent Stinging somebody, you can override your Sting, right? And then you can just scatter shot and then cast a rain shot or put a trap, whatever, right? So you, your Serpent Sting or your Viper Sting doesn't break, the, doesn't break the CC. So it's really, really, really useful. You're gonna be using Scorpion Sting a lot of times, right? And again, it's gonna reduce the damage output from a warrior or a rogue or even a hunter a lot. Or a red paladin, let's say if you fight a red paladin. Uh, improved scorpion sting is pretty much um, it's gonna be doing damage. Uh, this is about again 30% uh, of the amount of strength, about what uh, 20 stamina, 20 something stamina, right? 22 stamina, 23 stamina. Um, so that's about yeah, you're once the first Scorpion thing you do against enemy is pretty much gonna be doing 200 damage just by just by throwing out the Scorpion thing, right? Because when it gets dispelled, he's still gonna lose the PHP, right? So that's uh, Scorpion thing is also very good, right? That's what I mean. Just do one Scorpion thing, even if it's, if it's an mage, it just goes through barriers or everything because it reduces the enemy health. 
right? With the talent. So it's literally damage you're applying without even caring about crits. Miss, I mean, you, you need hit them, right? Right? You're not caring about crits or resists or anything. You can just boom, scorpion thing, reducing enemy stuff and also stamina. So it's pretty sick. Um, but yeah, it's up to personal choice. I would, I love to play with the spirit bond and then parry because usually you don't really need the scorpion thing at all. It really goes to personal choice. That's probably my choice. And again, it's. You can twist it um, to like change bonky to endurance training or speed heights or like more pet damage. It's up to you, right? It's pretty much up to you. Um, so that's pretty much the phase two. If we're gonna go on battlegrounds, etc., uh, you probably don't want this. You probably want um, what do you want? Uh, you don't want this either, right? You you want. Uh, you want something like this for battlegrounds, right? Like you want just more pet. You, you still want to be chasing. Your main job on battlegrounds is either guard flags or chase druids. So you're just gonna be. You, you don't really need main pet. You can still use it. So I'm just gonna put it there. But you still play intimidation scatter, and the rest of the points you put monster slaying because that applies to druids in uh, in cat form, right? I mean cat beer form whatever is the other form cheetah right so that's also pretty solid um, build to pretty much catch up through it again you have scatter shot you have intimidation okay the magic about intimidation especially in classic is that scatter shot shares diminishing returns with uh, freezing it's called freezing trap yeah freezing trap right so intimidation doesn't share diminishing returns with freezing trap that means that on this three second stone you can pretty much get uh, close enough to like put a trap on him safely and get full duration on trap and then have scatter for something else right um, another thing about intimidation right when you're fighting a mage if a mage let's say uh, mage goes on you right the mage is mounted it's gonna run into you and then it's pretty much gonna try to nova you right or it's just gonna block scatter shot and then get into you and nova you that's when you pop intimidation right and uh, get man pet like get your pet out of nova and stun the mage right and then unless the mage has a second block he's fucked right and then again if he does a second block you can just grenade him off and that's pretty much it right? you have one block two blocks and then the grenade is my third block and the mage is fucked and there's no third block so that's what i mean right the mage is gonna have to pot to potion or to do something in order to counter the grenade or to counter the intimidation or to counter the scatter shot. So again, like when you're fighting three a, a mage with two blocks, you, you want to have three kind of CCs, right? So that's one, that's two, and then the grenade is the third one. You can also use um, net. You can also use well, uh, that's the name, the um, goblin mortar, whatever, right? You have a lot of tools to get rid of mage uh, you know that the mage is on top of you pretty much uh, you just have a lot of tools so yeah mm. i like more pet damage over crit i mean it, it really depends right uh, i probably would like to put pet crit because on phase two you're most likely gonna be using a boar um and why a boar okay uh let's pet I think I put it like this, okay. So this is the boar pet spec um, for phase two as well. You're gonna be running a level 60 boar with charge, dash, bite, and then some resistances, right? Uh, the main reason of the boar is because it's a one second root, and um, with this spec, right? With the uh, spec I just linked on uh, this here. On this talent calculator, your your pet is gonna run pretty much 110% speed, 30% from your bestial swiftness, and 80% from your dash, right? So pretty much gonna be able to catch up with 100% mounts, no matter what, because again, it's a board, it's not only gonna be running 110%, it's also gonna have, uh, what, 
25 yard range uh one second snare right so it's pretty much a charge right and that charge is gonna do damage as well so i mean the charge is not gonna do damage but the next attack on the board is gonna do damage so you probably want to put uh, either pet damage or pet crit on the on your spec because of that right it's only because of that but again it's kind of you can pretty much skip it it's just gonna be a gonna be doing a big attack and that's pretty much it right but it's pretty powerful and it's I believe it's needed to catch people, right? Because again, phase two is gonna be world PvP. It's gonna be all about catching people in the world or running away from people in the world. And any kind of CC that you can be instantly applying while moving, it's sick. So that includes pet, board charge, includes intimidation, instant cast. You can just do it while moving. Scatter, which is instant cast, you can be doing it while moving. Um, I can link this, yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the the spec I would choose. Uh, you one dash because I just told you, right? You're gonna be catching up people, you're gonna be chasing people. If they hold 60% mount, it's quite easy. But some of them will have 100% mount. You one dash, you one charge, and you just wanna pretty much you you're targeting somebody. You're sending your pet in with dash. And your pet is gonna catch up to them, right? If your pet cannot catch up to them, like if you're using a cat or broken tooth or whatever, right? The wind uh, it's probably gonna catch up to them, but sometimes it won't, right? With charge, you guarantee that your pet is gonna catch up to them, and once your pet catches up to them, boom, intimidation, right? And then you got a target completely locked down for three seconds, four seconds if you have a board. And that's sick, that's sick, that's insane, right? You have four seconds to catch up to them. Whether you are in tiger, I mean tiger, tiger aspect, cheetah aspect, or whatever, right? So you can catch up to them, and then you can put a scatter. You can put whatever you want. You wanna, you know, you gonna have free time to do damage, right? Or to catch up to them. Uh, charge bite. I mean, yeah, charge. You need it. Bite. You don't really need it, but it's always nice to have. It's good uh, damage output, so I like it. Um, on the resistance, why I put arcane resistance? mages um there's two cases of arcane resistance right the first case being mage polymorphing your pet the second case is being mage uh no buying you cone of clothing you then fire blasting you and then spamming arcane explosion and if your pet somehow is low hp he's gonna kill your pet super quick with arcane explosions and you want your pet to resist those as well right when your pet to resist the polymorph you want your pet to resist the arcane explosion um, why no fire resistance? Because there is no fire resistance CC. I mean, there is grenade, I guess. Like you can resist with fire resistance, but that's pretty much about it. People is usually not gonna grenade your pets. Most likely gonna grenade you, right? So you're skipping that one. Frost resistance. You're gonna be resist. You want to resist novas uh, on your pet. Potentially frost shocks on your pet. Usually frost shocks are going on you from enemy shamans, but. You never know, so you wanna be resisting Novas, Frost Shocks, um, the Ice Barrier from the... No, not Ice Barrier, sorry. Um, yeah, the Ice Shield, whatever, you know, the, the one that you attack and it slows you down and your attack speed down, right? It can also um, resist the Mage Frostbite procs, so Frost Resistance maximum points on, on there because it's a must. Right, then you want nature resistance because you're gonna be fighting druids and shamans, earthvine totem is nature, so that's gonna potentially resist earthvine totem. It's also potentially resist the druids' uh, nature class, which is pretty much the roots, right? Or hibernate if your druid wants to hide the enemy druid wants to hibernate your pet for whatever reason, you got the resist, chilling, right. Um, what else? Shadow resistance. Why shadow resistance? Priest, AoE fear, warlock, curse of a um, lot of wa smart warlocks with, with curse of weakness on your pet because your pet is gonna get free damage from them. So it's only one global for them, and usually the pet is far away from the hunter, right? So you can just pretty much get one or two globals on the pet for free as a warlock. Curse of weakness is one of the best globals to put on a on a pet. Uh, if you want my add-ons, you can just. Uh, Addons, exclamation addons. Um, so shadow resistance is very nice, not only for warlocks but also for uh, priests, right? Shadow priests, 
especially against Undead Shadow Priest because your pet, when your pet attacks a Shadow Priest, Undead Shadow Priest is gonna get the touch of weakness and it's just gonna reduce the pet's damage and it's gonna take damage, etc. etc. So, yeah, you just want to have some resistance on your pet because, again, your pet is pretty much a CC target, right? Your pet is not a target you wanna kill, it's a target you wanna CC, right? So, that's my that's my choice for spec. It's again 300 out of 300 points. Alternatively, if you don't want buy, you can just put I guess points on stamina or the points on armor, or like lower your resistance to so you get more pet stamina. But again, usually people are not gonna be focusing the pets. They're gonna be focusing the hunter, right? So if they can focus the pet, that means that they can kill the hunter no matter what, and they just be pretty much disrespecting, or they are either stupid or disrespecting. So. Uh, I don't know if you can resist blind on classic, so nature resistance is probably okay as well. I know some rogues will try to gouge your pet as well, and I know gouge can proc um, poisons, so you want to have nature resistance as well, because if your pet gets gouge, and that gouge also procs a crippling poison, it's gonna be tough, right, for your pet to catch up, so you, you, you really want nature resistance. Uh, you, 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 that's pretty much the spec I would choose with, again, a boar. Um, cool thing about boar, right? Oh, I have to tame a boar. Oh, I have to level a boar. No, you only have to tame a boar. Let's go here. Okay. Um, and by the way, this website, Petopia, is pretty much all you need regarding pets and hunter for classic. There used to be a private server, I mean, not private vanilla version like back in the day they just updated it for now so anyways you want a boar because um not only that but because it's quite easy um okay so boar i believe i don't remember what the boar is so yeah cheese fruit meat right so i mean you will have meat from dark mouths and then you can just just in case you can just buy a lot of stuff right like Pretty much you can feed it, feed it whatever I believe. Right, like, pretty sure you can feed it the the pet uh, thing, the the mage the mage food. You can also feed it right, like the same way I'm feeding my wind serpent here with the mage food, right? With uh, conjure sweet troll, boom. You can probably feed a boar with uh, with mage food, so it's sick for ranking because you can just you're gonna come across any mage you can just hey dude give me some water and also some food right so it's cool um also the food is way easier to craft than the water the water is way more annoying because you craft as a mage level 60 you can craft 10 waters per craft per cast while you're getting 18 foods per craft so yeah it's just way easier to get food um mage will never say no to food but Sometimes they would say no to water because again it costs more mana and it, you need to make more casts. Um, so yeah, uh, and about boards, right? Which board do you tame? You tame. I mean, this all the ranges of charge, right? All the ranks of charge. If you want a special skin, you might have to tame uh, another type of board, right? If you want a special skin, you tame your board, you level it up. If you don't care about your skin, your board skin, then you just go plague lands, plague sign. Pretty simple, right? Like, just go there. You have to do quests uh, there for Stratholm, anyway. So, just go there, get your level 60 bar, boom. You don't even need to level it. You just need to level its happiness. You don't even need to do that. You just need to, um, yeah, you just need to play with the board a little bit and it's gonna be happy. Um, but again, board, like, peak, overall, it's gonna be best. Because you're gonna be chasing people down, you wanna lock people down, and your pet is pretty much a target. It's not a damage. Um, I mean, it's some extra damage, sure, but it's more about the lockdown you're getting it from. You're getting from your pet uh, in order to like again, you you pretty much uh, getting one second root from the charge intimidation. You have scatter. You have grenade. You have nets. You have goblin mortars, you have a lot of stuff, you have rocket cam, blah 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 blah, right? So, yeah. Mm, yeah, I mean, there's some whatever specific stuff that you can get. You can get gorillas on AoE stomp, 
But again, that's probably only good against rogues. Um, broken Tooth, people say too much about Broken Tooth, fuck that. Why? Because mainly there's talents for any class that just... Uh, if there's no talents, uh, there is, uh, you know, anti-pushback anti talents or anti-pushback methods, right? Ice Barrier is anti-pushback, this talent, uh, which one is this? This one? No. This one is anti-pushback talent, this one is not anti-pushback talent, but it absorbs more, any barrier in the game is anti-pushback, right? Shamans also have anti-pushback somewhere, maybe it's uh, elemental focus, I don't remember what is it though, but I know it's somewhere, elemental focus, no. Yeah, this one, right? It's uh, Eye of the Storm. When you get a crit, you just like get focus casting, and you don't uh, you don't lose any time from casting. We got over mage, which is the one caster, shaman, another caster, warlock. Um, if any warlock is killing people with shadow bolts, he's doing it wrong, right? Because you have a million instant spells if you're gonna be running around as a warlock, because you're gonna be using soul link most likely, right? And um, you know you're gonna be sacrificing your your things, and you know you're probably gonna be running with a void walker, or whatever. So you're not gonna be having any pushback because when you sacrifice void walker, you get a shield. There's probably some talents that could reduce the pushback, like this one, right? On hellfire, soulfire, rain of fire, whatever. It's uh, whatever. The only thing you're gonna get pushback on is shadow ball, but again, shadow ball is more like a PVE talent. Or like an instant spell when you get the nightfall, so it's whatever. Then we're going on priest, priest cast. Uh, the first thing, power word shield, uh, it's anti pushback. This one is anti pushback whenever you get a crit, and I believe, believe me, you're gonna crit at some point, and then you're gonna give it the pushback proc anyway. So don't even bother, man. Like bo broken tooth is just so bad. Broken tooth is only good against snoop to try to hard cast on you. That's pretty much shit, right? So. Don't even bother. Yeah, you see, Priest has one anti pushback thing with the shield, increased shield, another anti pushback thing with this every time you crit him, another anti pushback thing with the healing focus. So it's most likely you're not gonna get a. You know, same for Shaman, I think I saw it. I said Eye of the Storm, and uh, there's another one with the healing one. I don't remember what is it. Yeah, healing focus again, anti pushback talent. Then what else are we needing on, on the casters? Um, Paladin. Paladin has also anti-pushback. I don't know where is it, but it's somewhere with the con uh, concentration aura, right? Uh, no, actually, what is it? I don't know. What the fuck, man? It's fucking cold. You have anti-pushback tools everywhere, right? And, and if you don't, you can just bop yourself and cast. If you, like, I'm pretty sure if Paladin has anti-pushback, right, as well. Uh, I don't remember actually, but if for whatever reason you don't, then I'm, fi I'm pretty sure concentration hour is anti pushback as well, right? Um, if you don't have anti pushback, you can just bubble <laughs> or bob yourself or leap and start casting. Simple and easy, right? No problem. Then, what other class does any kind of cast? Warrior does slam. If a warrior is slamming, there's only one case where you're gonna be slamming when it's intercept. You have a million rage, you can just chug out the slam in the middle of the intercept. You know, intercept, auto attack slam, mortal strike, boom, right? Probably the target is dead anyways. But again, slam is just, you're not gonna care about it, right? It's, target is most likely dead in what you get an intercept, uh, slam, mortal strike there. Um, what other class? Hunters with the aim shot, again. Hunter can pretty much if you if you if you're facing a hunter, he's probably gonna trap your pet and he's gonna cast agent to you when you get on a scatter or something. So that's the only thing you can push back. You can only push back on a hunter the aim shot. You can only push back the main pet and you can only push back what is the other one the revive pet, right? I don't, and the volley, but uh, you know you're not gonna be using the pushback at all. So broken tooth, forget about it. Okay, Broken Tooth is a rare pet, hard to get, almost no reward from it, so, yeah, forget about it, okay? 
get a, a ball, man. Play with the ball and his own. Um, okay, what else am I talking about? Mm. So we went over the talents. Other talent builds you can get is... Uh, I mean, if you want to play Stamina Hunter, I guess you can just, you know... Hunter that you're afraid of a lot of melees because there's going to be a lot of, you know, melee rankers. So, yeah, I guess you can just go with the wing clip thing. I guess some... This here, survivalist. Right, sure, for that, you don't need to paint that at all. You can just, you know, go with this. Um, and then with that. Right, you just wanna get to the. You're probably not gonna get scattered, actually, right? Are you gonna get scattered? I don't think you are. With this amount of points, so I, I, I believe you are, actually. Yeah, you're gonna get scattered. Then something like this is pretty solid. Right, and then the other three points, you can use them. Whatever you want, uh, I like it on clever traps because I think it doesn't affect the diminishing returns, right? And then the other point, you can just finish out your wing clip, you can get some entrapment, you can get some more parry, whatever, right? So I think clever traps just, you know, increases your trap duration in PvP as well. I'm pretty sure it does in Classic, not 100% sure because I haven't PvP'd a lot on my Hunter, but on the Classic. Right now, I've been PvP on Warrior, most likely. That's a pretty solid uh, talent build. You're gonna have a lot of stamina, right? You have a lot of tools to get rid of uh, melee guys, right? You have a lot of damage as well. And, yeah, you, you, you can you can resist Frostball, you can resist Novas with this one. This one is to guarantee, that it's pretty much to spell hit cap your trap, so it doesn't resist. Like it has, it's always gonna have the 1% resist chance. But yeah, that's alternative spec, right? But again, this is more like uh, a Rathi Basin base defense spec, right? Where you're gonna be a lot, like you're gonna be attacked constantly and you need to defend the base while being alone. That's the spec I would use in Arathi Basin, defend the base, right? This one. It's not as much for World PvP ranking. Again, I mean, maybe it's your solo ranking and. In your server, there's a lot of rogues and warriors. I guess you could use that, right? Because again, deterrence, counter attack, uh, scatter shot, a lot of HP, uh, resisting slows, etc., etc. I'm from Spain, by the way, uh, not from Colombia. Um, more parry, etc., etc. Right? It's pretty solid spec as well. So just just go at free will, man. Take your spec again. Hunter has every. Every good hunter has their own personalized spec with their own playstyle. There is nothing standard about hunters, right? Like if you compare like hunter to any other class, there's so much flexible uh, talent specs. Um, yeah, there's so many flexible talent specs. So yeah, just uh, just play, just just play your own style. Uh, don't really recommend copying. I mean, you, no, sorry. I only recommend copying if you don't know about the game at all, right? If you're new to the game, etc. I would do it. I would copy the same way I copy. Good. I whenever I don't know about something, what I do is I just copy good players, and um, yeah, I just uh, I just copy good players. And when I get good mechanical skill on the things I copy, like. I feel confident when I start copying and I start copying good, then I start, uh, you know, I separate, I stop copying and then I start doing my own, right? That's the way the, the way I learn anything, the way I got teach to learn in school is pretty much copy the teacher, copy, uh, if you don't, don't have a good teacher, copy a good guy and then once you get the... You know, once you get confidence in odds to like do your own style, start doing your own style. Um, you only miss one spec and, and that's it. You only miss the, the BM BM phase two spec, which is this one. Right, this is one the BM Beastmaster phase two spec. To like chase people down with a board, right, with this spec. Just gonna quickly link it to you. This is the spec and this is the board spec. There it, there it goes. Okay, so um, that's pretty much it for specs. I mean, yeah, sure. If you're night elf, shadow melt, blah blah blah, you can just do this. Right? If you have a boar and you have shadow melt, you can just 
have your pet be dismissed, uh, be in shadow melt, and just do your attack, you know, the same way. You just don't have to rely on your pet, right? And then you just, you, you, the only thing is you only have to use one global on the pet to summon it or to do whatever, right? So, yeah, that's, that's, that's about it, uh, about ambushing on, on Night of Hunter. You only have to use one global and that's it, right? But you you get the global for free because you are on stealth anyways, right? So it just gives you the positioning advantage anyways. Uh, did the, I don't think the lupus is doing do shadow damage. Why I, that's why I'm not including it here. Lupus only does shadow damage on private servers or in classic as well, like back in the day. But it was one up to one point nine patch, and since we're playing in classic one point twelve patch, there's not gonna be any. Lupos uh, nightmares for any other class, right? So we're gonna forget about Lupos and move on. Any other specs? I mean, maybe and only maybe. I guess if you're ranking with a couple guys, right? If you're ranking in a group, um, like a mir I mean, melee cliff, physical cliff, whatever. You're ranking with rogue. Uh, pro Hunter with rogue is a very good combination as well, especially if you're night elf, right? You can just pretty much choose your fighting location. But Hunter Rogue Druid as well, it's pretty, you know, pretty solid group. Um, yeah, um, it's just much, it's just very annoying the in game sound. You can just turn it off. Yeah, sorry. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If, if you're ranking, that I turn it off by the way. Um, if you're ranking with uh, melee guys. I mean, you can probably buff them, it's not really something that you're gonna be caring about, but since your rogue is gonna be the one doing the lockdown on the CCs, you're probably gonna be able to, like, pretty much play the PvE spec, right? Uh, I mean, some sort of PvE spec with, um, I would say, either go pick the beast mastering tree, you're probably gonna be chasing down people down for your rogue anyways, right? So you're gonna be Probably playing like this, something like that. I would say with this and that, right? And then the other points, five points left, put them somewhere. Um, probably on I mean, seven points actually. Three points here, probably wing clip, probably trap, probably. Pff, I mean, me, even scorpion sting is very good actually. Scorpion sting is very solid as well. Because again, it's instant damage you are applying to a target by just reducing the stamina, and it's not something you need to care about about barriers or anything. It's just you're literally reducing his stamina, and even if he blocks it or he gets rid of it, he's gonna still lose that percentage of health. It's it's a, this is about with max rank uh, scorpion thing. It's about 200 something health, so it's pretty solid, uh, 230 something like that. So it's pretty much an instant spell that does damage, that doesn't break CC. Now you can do this while the enemy is CC'd and it's not gonna break it, right? It's just literally stamina reduction, it's sick, okay? It's damage that you're applying, you're not breaking any CC, you're not caring about barriers or about anything, it's just straight damage, you're taking HP, you're taking away from enemy. Um, yeah, and they probably will not notice as well. So yeah, that's pretty much the spec as well. This this spec is probably if you're ranking in a group of melee guys, right? You're gonna be Fer Feral Druid, uh, Rogue, and um, Hunter. It's pretty good, right? As well because you have the surprise factor, you have the dating factor, the, the fact that you're alone, Hunter, right? Uh, they're gonna attack on you, and then the Rogue and the Druid they're gonna come and they're gonna kill everybody that attacks you and. You, yeah, or you're gonna be chasing people down, and your druid and rogue are just gonna. Your druid and rogue are gonna, you know, do your job, so it's fine. Um, moving on, I think I did like a couple of specs, right? Again, every spec, every hunter plays their own spec. Not, you're not gonna dictate anything for anybody. Just you know, play your own spec. This is just a reference, right? Um, and again, if you wanna play with cat, play with cat. If you wanna play with wolf, play with wolf. If you wanna play with crocodile, dude, just go ahead and play with a crocodile. Crocodile owns, okay? It just doesn't have sprint. 
that's it. Um, okay, so and that's all for the specs. Uh, there is, I mean, if you play with a different pet than a boar, uh, the resistances are usually gonna be the same. Um, you're not gonna have charge, and then you're gonna have claw here or prowl or blinding breath or whatever. So I save those 25 points because your pet usually have three abilities that can use, right? You never cover is pretty much a PD thing, like the threat reduction thing. You barely use that ability anyway, so yeah. Uh, moving on, we're gonna go with um mm -mm. yeah. About addons by the way, just go curseforge.com, right, and just download uh, this item back for classic, what does item back do? It's pretty much one of the best uh, items. Yeah. It just, you know, you see bottom here when I'm hovering, that is my item rack. I keep on, like, out of, uh, you know, I keep on my helm, I keep on my offhand, I keep on my belt, keep on my boots, keep on my trinkets, right? Uh, you can also put a bar, you can move the bar, you can add stuff to the bar, like, I don't know, I, can, I, want, I want to get the ring, right? I can just add it to the bar, or, you know, maybe... I wanna get it somewhere else because I wanna put the trinkets aside or something like that. So you can queue items whenever you get into combat, you leave combat, whatever. It's pretty pretty solid add-on, really helpful. The only thing you cannot switch items in combat doesn't let you switch even weapons. Like if, if I'm in combat and I wanna switch weapon, it doesn't let me. You need to manually switch the weapons in combat with macros, like default UI macros, like slash equip this slash equip that, right? Just keep that in mind. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it, I don't think that's, like, other add-ons with, like, for PvP, I, I, I will go later on with this, but, you know, I just wanted to say, if you need to download any add-ons, just download the Twitch, the Twitch client, right, which is bound, like, bind your account to CurseForge, download the Twitch add-on, and then this add-on is just gonna, you know, download, I mean, not update every add-on up to date with the new patches, etc., because every time they put a new patch, on classic sometimes so add ons get completely yeah completely fucked up man and you don't want those add ons like sometimes you have to rely on some add ons right on PvP like spy right spy is pretty much big add on for PvP because it detects people it detects stealth etc etc it's kinda OP but it is what it is it's available on classic so pretty much if you're not using the spy add on you're on a disadvantage like awareness disadvantage, so you just want it, right? So there's some add-ons that are quite OP, but again, Classic allows them to be used, so you need to use them, else you're on a disadvantage, so... It is what it is, you know, make sure you get the Twitch client, upload your add-on, I mean, download your add-ons there, you know, with your folder, right? Have my Ritual and my Classic folder, just download your add-ons, or get more add-ons, you can just get them here, just, I don't know, I wanna get recounts, so I just go to recount page, boom, Installed right, and I would get it here. I just need to alter for my client, reload my UI. Uh, item rack, item rack, okay, curse forge or Twitch client, and you're chilling. Okay, then moving on, spe I mean, specs, gear, gear choices, right? Um, we're gonna move on to okay, this. I made quite a good amount of gear sets for you guys. Um, 60upgrades.com So I made quite a good um, quite a good amount of gear sets. I'm gonna go with the pre best in slot. We're gonna go we're gonna start with the um, the first spec I said with the this spec. Which gear do you wanna be running with this spec? Usually on wall PvP, you're gonna be running Stamina Hunter, but you can also, uh, you know, you can you can run also standard gear. But Stamina Hunter is pretty solid. Um, the only thing is with this spec, you're not gonna get share footed, right? So probably Stamina Hunter spec is more like for. Where did I put my survival spec? Shit, All right somewhere. Uh... I linked it somewhere, right? My survival spec, so it's whatever. Like, it's the it's the one where you had points in here and points in here, points in here, points in here. 
you completely forget about the BM3, just get points and marksmanship and survival. And there you will get like 5% hit because you get you not only get 3% hit from the share footed and also you get 15% resistances to slows and snares. So you can just run 2% hit with this gear, which is pretty much full BOE slash easy to get gear, right? Helm of Narf, probably 20 gold on the actual house. The enchant is probably I believe the enchants, like both enchants, are probably more expensive than the whole gear set. But again, I'm playing it for like full setup, so yeah, that's my choice, right? Uh, you're gonna be about again 4.8, 4.k HP and buff, 3.3k runner and buff. With the talents, you're gonna be pretty much sitting at 5.4k, 5.3k HP and buff with the talents. Just by having this gear, if you get a priest, stamina buff, mark of the wild raid, etc., etc., you're gonna be insanely HP. And again, this gear doesn't require almost any effort to get, so I really, really recommend getting that. Right? Helm of Narf, 20 gold on Action House. This enchant is probably 200 gold right now because people, everybody's flipping this for phase 2 PvP, so if you didn't get it earlier, you're not gonna get it now, if you, I mean, unless you're rich, right? If you're rich, then good luck with that. If you're not rich, you better be lucky on dungeons. UBRS neck, pretty solid. One crit stamina, it's good. Also, having spirit for phase two is pretty solid as well. You see, this this has spirit, this has spirit as well. Everything has a little bit spirit, right? So you're getting a lot of spirit. Somewhere it's for the out of combat region, not only mana but also HP region. Mm, so yeah, uh, again, BOE world, just buy on the action house, twenty gold, whatever. Um, UBRS, first boss, uh, Pyroguard, Embersir, usually people doesn't need on that, so it's pretty free to get, free up for grabs, uh, people doesn't care about it because they go for the mark of furthering, anyways, right on the, the quest of the Indreams, that's a PPE item. Beast, Talker, Mantle, um, that's kind of annoying to get, if you are lucky and you get it, it's cool, if you are not lucky, then just go for something else, right? Uh, you can buy the Stathole Militia, Shoulder Guards are pretty solid, they don't have as much stamina, but it's fine. These ones are also pretty solid, they have less agility, but they also have intellect, but they are again pretty solid. And then, I don't know, Wind Tongue, they're pretty good as well, right, or anything, pretty much, I mean, Dragon Scale, they're not bad, but they're probably quite expensive. Um, yeah, I mean, I would even say Dragon Scale here. And Dragon Scale here is quite a good choice as well. Black Dragon Scale thing. There they are. Right, it's quite solid. And then you can probably get Change Leggings of Destruction for more Black Dragon Scale. Either the chest or the legs. Probably the chest. Change it for Dra Dragon Scale. Then again, that's only if you want to go with the Dragon Scale set. And the only thing the Dragon Scale set has is it doesn't have much stamina, but it has. Uh, Fire resistance, hit crit, so it's pretty solid. But again, we're just gonna go standard dungeon gear. I'm not gonna, you're not gonna be spending a lot of gold on it. Uh, what was the name? Some boots with 18 attack power. These ones, which pretty much are good, um, good boots uh, and good. These shoulders again, they're they could be hard to get or it could be first run. So. You at least need to do one run on lower Black Rock Spire, so yeah, you should do it, right? You, if you get lucky, you get lucky. Um, anyways, going, moving on. Emperor's New Cape, 16 agility, 16 stamina, 6 agility, pretty solid as well. You want to enchant 5 resistances. Resist resistances are very OP on Classic right now, as it gets, so the more resist you can get, the better, right? So try to get resists on it. On the enchants, the cloak resist is very cheap, the shoulder resist is quite expensive, time-wise, gold-wise, I mean, 40 gold is whatever, right, but time-wise, you need to get exalted with uh, Argendon. If you're not exalted, you're gonna get uh, revered, I believe you need to be revered, you can get one of the resist you want, it's only five, so I would choose frost resistance or either, either frost or shadow. Um, chest, beardy, I mean, these two you get them in beardy. This you get in lower Black Rock Spire, by the way. 
this you add in BRD on the last boss, this you add in BRD on the Hunter Justice boss, um, this you get on Darmal West. If you're, you're gonna be spamming Darmal West for the belt, right, anyway, so yeah, this you get on Darmal West. Um, this you get on Stratholm. Again, I, I just put it for the Skull of Impending Doom, but you can probably get another weapon, right? Like some weapon with stamina or something. Like, I mean, if you're rich, you can just get Arcanine Reaper. I ranked with Arcanine Reaper back in the day. Why wouldn't you? But that requires gold and time effort, so yeah, good luck with that one. If you don't have the gold and time and you don't want to get 200, um, I actually don't know which 200 you could get. This one is pretty solid, right? Not for the damage, but the, for the stamina and the 2% crit, it's pretty solid to get. Um, what else could you get? This one is pretty solid as well, it has good stamina, good agility, and it's okay top end damage, like not solid, but okay, I guess. Then again, just like you wanna look for stuff that has some stamina if you're gonna play stamina hunter, right? Just go looking around and find a, a cool weapon with stamina. Crawl rate is not so bad either. Not for the damage, but for the crit, you know. Um, yeah. Just keep looking. Malicious Axe, where is this this thing from? Scholamans. Uh, you can just do the Paladin quest, I believe it is, the Paladin mount quest, or the Warlock mount quest. You can get this axe, but it's probably quite annoying to farm, so I don't really recommend to farming that, right? Anyways, you get what I mean, right? If you want a 200, get a 200 with stamina, or get a 200 with crit, or with crit and stamina. If you already did the quest, you got the bow quest, you can just get this one, this is pretty much all in one thing, right? But anyways, you got 100, you want a 100. I'm talking about pre-rate best pre-rate best in slot for PvP anyway, so this one is pretty solid, Stat Home and Dead, right? What else you get in Stat Home and Dead? You get this one. Uh, again, stamina agility, pretty solid crossbow, a lot of damage there coming out from it. Probably the best crossbow you can best uh, weapon you can get, pre-rate best, pre-rate, anyways, right? And then you get this stamina ring as well, which is pretty sick, right? You're playing stamina hunter, you're playing stamina rings, boom, boom, stamina rings, right? Mm, this lower black rock spire, I told you you need to do, and this one lower black rock spire, maybe even two, right? You need to do one for this uh, trinket, and if you don't do the bijou belonging quest chain, you probably need to do two or even three lower black rock spires to get this. But again, it's worth because it's stamina, agility, and hit, so it's pretty solid. It's it's quite good, in my opinion, right? So I would take this. Uh, again, you wanna be. This is a male tanky stamina hunter, right? On the belt, the war book binding is pretty solid. It doesn't have a lot of stamina. You could probably get um, what's the name? This one, 15 agility, 50 stamina, pretty solid as well. Frost resistance. I would arguably say this is even better, right? This is even better because it gives you a lot more stamina and it gives you frost resistance. Which is against good against mages, right? And if you don't get this one, you're gonna get this one is pretty solid as well, Calaveras one. Or if you want to pair it with the uh, you know beast stalker mantle, beast stalker belt to get some armor, but it's not really something you're gonna be caring much about. Um, this one is good, but you either choose the gloves or the belt, right? So I would choose the gloves usually. But this is pretty solid as well, and then what else? I mean, there's quite a lot of choices there. Just keep scrolling around the belts, right? That you will find. You need to just need to find the belt that fits you. Mm. Just don't go by the standards. Again, this is uh, specifically about stamina hunter here, right? Which a lot of hunters play stamina hunter, so that's why I'm, I'm putting it there. Um, all these graves, I know I know they don't have a lot of damage, right? This this is one from Skull, by the way. This one is a bit of from Scholar, right? Uh, yeah, Rust for Whisper, good. Uh, this Darmal West, you get this in Darmal West, you get this in Darmal West, you get the other belt, the crit belt on Darmal West, right? So, yeah, you're gonna be doing Darmal West for a while. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna be doing best in slot after. I have tier 1 sets as well, right? Don't worry about it. So, yeah, Darmal West, pretty solid uh, boots. They don't have much damage, but again, they have good stats. Stamina, intellect, you don't care much about attack power, right? But there's a very, very good. They're male, 
and then same right there like i would say that you know the pre-tier one boots for stamina hunter uh alternatively you can just get these these stuff are pretty solid as well right or like i don't know man like fleet flute no not these ones which uh we are the the ones i, I want timmy timmy galoshes those ones are pretty solid as well stamina agility intellect you know probably even arguably better but they just have less stamina and we're playing stamina hunter so there's also another six stamina boots that give 20 stamina and shadow resistance somewhere. I don't know where they are. They probably not even here. Oh no. Yeah, it just you, you know, you just keep scrolling around. You look cadaverous walkers, good stamina but no intellect. That is also again on a, look at these boots as well. Good um, 20 stamina, six agility, five strength. Again, just keep scrolling around boots. You will find whatever you want, right? I just like these ones because they just they're pretty solid. So um, yeah, it's pretty fine. Um, on the on the rings, you want this ring, right? Band of flesh, uh, start from undead, mid mid on signet, about one hundred gold on the auction house. Don't want to get this hit. Mm. Mid mid on signet band of flesh. This is about 100 gold on the action house, depending on the server, right? And this this says on the approximate cost 40 gold for the helm of Narf, 100 gold for the mid mid on signet. Again, approximate cost, right? It's sometimes it will be more, some servers will be more, some servers will be less. Probably after the guide is gonna be sometimes more if it gets popular. I don't think it will get popular, but never know, dude. So, anyways, um, this quest from UBRS. Uh, lower black rock spire into you upper black rock spire uh, like this is quite a cheap easy to do build gear build and pretty you can switch any gear besides these gloves and you're still gonna be fine right so these gloves are the only must have item of the guide uh, you can also get maraudon ring right hit rings from maraudon or if you are lucky get a courier hit ring from maraudon it also has stamina right or if you want crit, get crit. But again, we're talking about specifically stamina hunter, which is pretty solid for PvP. So yeah, you're gonna be swapping those trinkets with engineering anyway. So if you wanna keep one of those trinkets, you want this black hunt breath. The other one, it's just range attack power. But again, it's pretty cheap on my server. This the hunter book goes for about ten silver. So pretty much, you buy the hunter book, you go to dire bowl, you turn it, you get five gold and this trinket. So you're not losing any time and you're gaining gold. So free you know free pretty much and well skull of impending doom just quest often you want to shopping this one with the um, with the pouch medicine pouch medicine formal medicine pouch skull of impending doom you know you want to be shopping those a little bit you always wanna like uh, if you want skull of impending doom and medicine pouch on cooldown that's when you want to use Either offhand or a two hand, right? Uh, if you're gonna be using offhand, I would say uh, another board slicing hatchet with. Um, or is there, is there is an axe with 12 stamina? I believe there's axe with 12 stamina. I don't know what's the name of it. It's probably Dharma axe. Wait. So I don't know where it's at. It's, uh, I think it's from the first boss, right? Uh, is no. North. If you go to the guards, hedge cutter, look, five strengths, two of stamina, you can get two of those, you're gonna be chilling as well, right? Double hedge cutter, you can pretty much solo this ball, you can just zone in, zone out, get in, and just, you know, attack the boss and just kite him with the hyenas, just kill him with serpent thing, whatever, it's, it's easy to kill, right? So, it shouldn't be a problem for you. Or you can just do the classic tactic where you just kite this boss into the you know inside this uh, thing up to you uh, you can kite it inside the into the library and you just kite it up and down etc it's quite easy to, to just farm it if you want to farm it but i see the farm it so i'm fine I, I also have like i have this so fuck this right um so that's it for the stamina hunter pre-raid benzene slot Right, I mean, just move stuff left and right. If you don't have the hit talent, you need the hit talent to play Stamina Hunter. If you don't have the hit talent, then get something with hit. There's a lot of items with hit in this game, so 
get something with heat, you need 5% heat for the hunter, so yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, if you are gonna be PvPing without stamina hunter, right? Which you're gonna be doing damage. Mm, I don't think I put it there, actually. Hunter PvP pre versions, no? Which is pretty much with damage output, right? That's, uh, I mean, I would say skilled hunter, skullic, whatever, that you usually don't get unless you get opened by a rogue when you're like fighting some guy, then you can probably pretty much wear leather gear. That's why you are, that's in a situation where you are not getting hit at all. You're playing this, right? Uh, Blackwood can just playing full crit with agility and chance, pretty much almost PvE gear, right? Just pretty much. Uh, 2, 3%, 5% hit, can arguably change those for, um, those for, um, whatever they're called, right, uh, you know what I mean, those shoulders for, like, True Strike, for example, and this for the leather, basis of the clips one, for example, something like this, you will have less HP, you will have less mana, you, you will have a lot of, a ton more damage output, right? Just big damage, 5% hit, booming people down, like left and right, right? You could probably go like full PV, almost full PV, right? With this, for example, right? Like, just gonna be doing so much damage, like, it's actually incredible, and Mongoose Boots. Yeah, so you're just gonna be doing so much damage compared to the stamina hunter, but again, you're probably losing 1v1 to stamina hunter anyways, right? So this one is probably for group ranking where you actually are meant to be the damage of your group when you're ranking, so that's when you use this, right? You just go minimum amount of, amount of hit, maximum amount of crit. If we're comparing this DPS hunter PvP versus the other um, stamina hunter, you see that you know there's a lot of difference here. There's hunter stamina hunter is gonna get about 1.5k HP, about 2k mana, right? Um, I mean the agility is kind of whatever, right? Hunter is gonna get pretty much more raw stats, but it's gonna get a lot less damage. I mean a lot less damage. It's seven percent less speed. 228 attack power. Attack power is quite valuable on Hunter as well because you're actually doing the. You're pretty much. All your shoots attack, escape with attack power. And I'm talking about, yeah, you're gonna be free shooting, so you're gonna be doing way more damage with the damage Hunter, right? But again, it's just comparison a little bit, you know, you're losing a lot of damage, but you're getting a lot of stamina and quite a good amount of intellect. Pretty much you're trading damage for survivability, then you can just like, if you don't like, that's the extremes, right? You can just be balanced hunter and just balance both gears and just put some sort of like, let's say 4.5 KHP, 4.4 KHP and like 12, 13% crit, right? It really depends uh, what you want to play, what spec you want to play, etc. So, yeah. Usually you compensate stuff with uh, talents, etc. So up to you. So that's pretty much about all the you know gear, right? It's a lot of more gear. Like let's say you are a guild master, you are hosting your own pub, like I am. You are I don't know best friend with the guild master. You are a big streamer. I don't know. You're a very lucky guy, yeah, and you're going for the best in slot, right? Best in slot, the full best in slot list is this one. I'm showing it right now. Um, with probably some tweak uh, around, like probably change uh, Pain Weaver Band for like a Kuria, for example. To, like if you want to play with the with the damage spec and no, no, I mean, it depends. Like a Kuria is only for a talent, pretty much. But you're pretty pretty good with Pain Weaver, in my opinion. Uh, you want Pain Weaver over innervating, innervating, innervating Band every day, right? If you can choose, if you're going 
is you going to use DKP on something or you're gonna go to gold bid runs, you're gonna play with this. Right, this is the best in slot in my opinion, at least. Um tier one, full tier one, right? Hundred HP or eight agility up to you. Some I would I probably put eight agility because you know you're using this for PvE anyway, so just put eight agility there. Um you need to have two pair of boots, one for minor speed, another for seven agility. Uh, PvP PvE, right? Same for the gloves. You want two pair of gloves, one for agility and one for minor mount speed, right? Actually, you want three pairs of boots, one for PvE, one for PvP, like minor speed, seven agility, and mount speed, right? And you want two pair of tier one gloves, one pair for agility, one pair for mount speed, right? So if you ever have to be dismounted, you're not gonna lose your your tier one set. I know it sounds excessive, but again, if you can afford it, dude, it's best in slot for a while anyway. You're gonna be using this phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four, even like you're gonna be using a tier one for a while, anyways, for PvP and PvE. So you're gonna get a lot of molten core IDs. So yeah, that's pretty much eight tier one set. Uh, for the multi shot damage, for the raw stats you get, for the mana you get, for everything you get, pet HP, pet resistances you get, you get a lot of stuff. You get a lot of bonuses there, right? And what else you want? You got only neck. Again, if you have, if you don't have, you're gonna have eight tier one, you're gonna have this. Like you're gonna have the Onyx here at hundred percent, right? Um, and then the only Ragnaros cloak, pretty solid. The only thing I can think about is uh, on Kazak. Uh, when Kazak comes out on phase two, can probably get if your guild is good, you can get uh, Kazak cloak with 20 stamina, one crit. But it's kind of whatever, right? It's pretty much even. Um, what else are we talking about here? Yeah, lock the lar. I mean, that's for when you have your skulls of impending doom on cooldown. If you don't have, I mean. If you have your spelling school of impending doom or your uh, healing book, not not healing book, the healing the medicine full book medicine pouch, you could probably play with cut off on tooth and school of impending doom here. Or if you like to play with double thing, cut on tooth, brutality blade, actually brutality blade here, cut on tooth, right? Like pretty solid choice. Both are pretty solid choices, but. Uh, on a general note, I just put Clock the Lar, Lock the Lar, you know, you're chilling with that. Other things we're talking about the different quick strike ring. Um, I'm pretty sure warriors are gonna disagree with you. Again, that's only if you can afford it, right? Warriors are gonna disagree with you. Probably even rogues for PvP are gonna disagree with you. If you want to be more safe with the heat, right? It's 4% heat. That's pretty much required you to get survivalist talents, survival talents, uh, with this setup. And you can just change one ring for again, just change pain weaver for like blackstone, five percent hit your hit cap. Or if you are a cool guy, you just take a Korea, and you you say boom, fuck tanks, fuck melee, fuck rogues, fuck everybody. I'm a hunter. This is hunter item, hunter hunter item. Haha, <laughs> XD right. Uh, so yeah, up to you. I don't. I mean, I have a courier, but for other reasons, right? I host my own pub. I just ninja whatever I want. So yeah, but you're good with the pain weaver band, right? Um, and then again, if you're the kind of guy who's gonna take a courier, you're probably the kind of guy who's gonna take DST, Drake Funk Talisman, and Blackwing Lair. So you know, there's people that has no limits on taking up taking gear from others. When they have no limits, that's I'm 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 talking about the people that can afford uh, I don't know a Volkswagen, and I'm talking about people that can afford uh, a Ferrari, right? You need to talk about the both two types, right? You, you want the the guys that cannot afford many things and the guys that can afford everything they want. So this is a guide for both of you. Uh, this is PVP best in slot, right? There's other like let's say you are unlucky with the loot, but you still can get everything you want. Then you go with this item setup, um, which is pretty much five tier one. You're probably gonna get some point, right? Five tier one is pretty quite easy to get, I would say. Easier than get eight tier one, requires less luck, right? You're probably getting a lot of hunter 
what happens in a lot of guilds, even in apes as well, is that tier 2 hunter is dropping left and right, and people like hunters have one helm for agility, one helm for stamina, and one helm for bender, right? So, uh, same for the pants. So, usually you're gonna have these pieces easy access with tier 2. Um, so, yeah, you can just play with those two pieces, right? And again, we're talking about you can afford everything. That means you can take this away from the tanks, you can take this away from Fury Warriors or PvP Warriors. Never know. If you can take this away from them, sure, take it, right? Um, what else are you going to be taking away from other Warriors? This one, right? Uh, and then again, if you, want, if you want just to look cool, just boom, put Band of Akuria, even though you don't need it, just put it there, right? then just change this with giant stalkers and you know something like this seven percent hit that's that's a hard hit cap for pvp because there's rogues that put talents rogues put talents on reducing the hit damage like the hit you know if you go to here rogue there is this talent here that reduces the, the chance to get hit so if you want to play safe you actually want nine percent hit because and then you can just get up to 4% hit uh, reduction on the enemy. I'm just putting random talent just to see, like, you reduce 4% chances to hit on the enemy. So, if you want to play it safe, you probably want 9% hit, so you probably want to be like this. Like, that's 8%, and then you get 1% hit from somewhere, from something. I, I don't even care. Something just put the heat ring here or something like that, you know. That's but that's ultra safe uh, choice, or even just put three percent scope here instead of damage. Put three percent scope, which probably you can go, you're gonna be using three percent scope for PvP, so technically you can just you can just do this, right? So a courier, then you can just do this, something like that. It's ten percent heat, and then at some point you're gonna drop this tier one, right? And then you're gonna put tier one. In tier 2 hit, you're gonna drop it for the tier 1. So, when you're dropping the tier 1, you know, you just, just keep switching stuff. And yeah, anyways, we're just gonna put back Pain Weaver here. That's 5% hit, perfect. Um, Stamina Hunter PvP best in slot. I don't think, I mean, I could make a list for Stamina Hunter PvP best in slot, but if you got this amount of gear, you don't really want to be playing Stamina Hunter, right. Uh, by the way, minor speed on boots. Why on PvP? Why you don't put stamina on boots? Why don't you don't put agility on boots? You're a hunter. You're playing with aspects. Yes, I am. Okay, I am playing with aspects. But sometimes you would get a warrior on you. You would get a rogue on you, and you cannot play with aspects, dude. And they're gonna catch up to you if they got, you know, if you don't have minor speed and they have minor speed, they're gonna catch up to you, right? Unless you are an aspect god and you can afford using globals on using and cancelling your cheetah aspect, which again is ultra situational, you play minor speed. Okay, that's the general rule for hunter and PvP. You play minor speed 99% of the cases. Yes. Again, like if you are the guy that's free shooting in the back and you can PV people down, sure, PV them down, put seven agility on boots. Why not, right? But usually this is the way to go. Um, more things, spell power gear. Don't just don't. Okay, it's too expensive. Too, it's too expensive time wise. Not worth. <laughs> um, what can I say, man? It's just memes. Expensive, uh, it's gonna make a lot of people mad, right? You're gonna go UBRS and, and roll on this, people are gonna be mad at you, it's gonna kick you. Save on this and BRD, save on the. I mean, this is whatever, you can ninja this for free. Uh, same for these in lower black rock spire, this one, that one, and like you're gonna roll on those one, and they're, they're just gonna flip themselves, right? This, if you're rolling against a shaman, he's gonna flip as well, he's gonna actually flip if you roll on this on a shaman. And I don't know if you roll on the you know the helm, it's, it's gonna flip. So just don't do that. Uh, I already got my set though. I, I got my set. I actually ninja a lot of these parts, but you know it's me. 
I had the permission to do that, so yeah. Mm. Consumables for PvP, we're gonna go real quick to here, consumables, uh, crafting, let's go alchemy first, flask, don't forget about flask, unless you are really, really pushed to farm honor, you don't need flasks. Uh, you know, okay, mana potions, you're gonna, mana potions and healing potions, you're gonna use it a lot, right? If you have a lot of gold, you prob you're probably better using that one. It's quite cheap considering Golden Sansom and Dreamfoil's drop on Dire Maul. Probably cheaper than, you know. It's quite, this is pff, almost as cheap as this one. The only thing is that you need to have an alchemy, alchemist in your guild. And the imbued bile is quite, quite expensive. But it's pretty much, this one is pretty much a major healing potion and a major mana potion like all, all in one, right? So it's pretty good for Warlock, for Hunter, for Priest, for Druid, any class that needs uh, mana and HP. Boom. Major rejuvenating potion. It's sick. People don't know many about it, right? So, yeah. And the recipe is BOE, so you can just buy it off auction house, probably cheap. And just, you know, but people don't know the potion, they don't even buy it in the auction house, so... Yeah, you need materials and you need to know a crafter pretty much. Mana potion, healing potion, you find those in Darbal. The cheap versions, you can probably buy them cheap on the auction house as well. Right? The other is not worth, the other ones are just not worth. Um, forget about Dreamless Sleep Potion, I don't think it's worth that. Uh, probably, also probably too expensive to make, whatever. Proud Pots. So it's always nice to be running around. The only thing that can be dangerous on you, probably shaman burst if something, right? Or I mean this the the this amount this this one, these two protection potions are the best you can be running, right? Because they're quite cheap and they absorb a lot of damage. They probably did 20 silver each, right? Maybe a little bit more, right? But 20, 50 silver each, and they last one hour, they are buff protection. And their damage absorption, so they're pretty pretty sick, pretty good, right? Like if a mage, if you get a mage blinking on top of you, shatter combo. This is pretty much shatter combo absor absorption. This is pretty much uh, elemental maps mastery absorption as well. So pretty good potions. The greater ones too expensive. I mean maybe the king one is quite cheap, but the other ones are quite expensive. So. I would say these two ones are the, the way to go. If you're gonna be running around with protection potions, I would take those two. Uh, useful potions, in this spot, you always carry one stack of each in this spot because you're doing the armal tribute. And again, if you're ranking, you're fighting people, you get them mad and they group up and they try to camp you. And there's phase two, there's no layers, right? So you cannot layer out uh, like you would do if you're a dodger, right? In a back when layers are up so you play with you have in spots in the back right when you rest you just instantly in this button run away to save spot mount up and run always want to carry swiftness potions because sometimes you're not gonna have the global to go tiger aspect or you are afraid of getting instant uh, like i don't know you're, you're chasing you're kiting a mage or something you don't want to get days with a uh, shadow burn you don't want to get days with a uh, Shock, you will don't want to get dates with um, whatever it's called, Fire Blast, etc. etc. Right? So, Swiftness Potion is quite good as a hunter, like alternative to um, to ch using Cheetah, right? Um, free Action Potion, also quite good, but you don't need as many as you would think you would need, right? Uh, the thing about Free Action Potion is active use but it's preventive use okay you cannot get slowed and then use free action potion this is gonna be this is gonna be looking like an idiot if you get nova and then you use free action potion you're gonna sit in the nova and that's it <laughs> right you're gonna still sit in the nova the other one that you could use the living action potion that's the one that takes you away from the nova right free action potion is before the fight you need to pop it right you need to preemptively pop free action potion and then you're good. Um, leap, you're gonna be carrying at least, I would say, two stocks of those, right? When there's 
you can leap off the mortar strike, you can leap off the rupture from a rogue, you can leap off a wing clip, you can leap off rocket helm. Like if you see somebody charging to you, right? If I see this Gordok master, right? A guy that is this distance, let's say, okay, let's put. Mm, if the skull, the skull guy is is gonna rocket help me, so he's gonna run insane speed to me, right? So I can see that he's running insane speed to me. I can instantly boom leap. I, I don't have my, my leap binding is uh, there. I'm not gonna waste a leap right now. But you can see he's running fast to me. I can just instantly leap it, limited invulnerability posture. Like boom, press it like before I get the effect, and then I'm gonna be immune to the rocket helmet, right? It's a, a good trick people don't know much about. So you want the leaps to again leap off harvesting, leap off mortal strike, leap off uh, bleeds, leap uh, when you are getting two millis on you, etc. 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 It's pretty good. You're never gonna have enough. Okay. Um more swim speed potion. It's only good if you're camping to other charm. So yeah. Um, more potions, stone shield potions. I wouldn't advise to carry those. I don't think there's many uses for that. If you're facing a warrior, you're probably better off using the leap. Stone shield is quite good though. It's uh, gonna reduce a lot of damage, but I you're still gonna be taking damage. So I don't know about that one. Restopod, you're gonna be carrying at least like five to ten of those. You're probably gonna be spamming those. You can pretty much, pretty much pre-restopod. Uh, a ship, you can pre rest up with a fear. Uh, every time you face a warlock 1v1, you are probably gonna be rest up thing because the dots, if they don't kill you, they're gonna be quite annoying to you. And that's pretty much most of the damage that most of the warlock's damage on a hunter is dot damage. So, yeah, rest up is completely nulli nullifying the warlock effect. Purification potion is similar to a rest potion, but it only removes one, so it's quite shit and it's quite expensive as well, so I don't really recommend it. When it comes to elixirs, if you got gold, right, um, Mongoose. Mongoose is quite a good amount of damage, I don't even know why is it, special elixir maybe. Mongoose, it's quite good. Fortitude is quite good. I would even say Sage is quite good. But again, it's not something you is, you're not gonna need to rank. Um, that's more like a pre-made versus pre-made elixir. You pop this, you pop that, you pop that. But again, pre-made versus pre-made situation, it's phase two, you're ranking in the world. Which is very good one, is this one. This one is very, very good, super underrated, and quite cheap to make. So, I mean, you can even downgrade it, it doesn't matter. Like, Troll's Blood Potions, Super underrated for ranking. You're gonna be ranking out in the world outside. You're gonna be using that quite a lot. Those one are quite cheap to make as well, so I wouldn't discard using those. Like defense and um, trolls bloods are quite cheap, so I wouldn't discard using those. Even elixirs of agility, but again, strangle kelp is get getting expensive. Goldthorn getting expensive. Goldthorn getting expensive. So probably. Swift Thistle, expensive. Swift Thistle, expensive. So completely forget about Elixirs of Agility, right? Elixirs of Intellect, if you're ranking alone, they're quite cheap to make. Probably Blind Wheel right now is expensive because you need Ghost Monstrums and Blind Meat to make uh, limited invulnerability potions. So yeah, kind of forget about that. Arcade Elixirs, well, same stuff, right? Other Elixirs, Cat's Eye Elixir, very good to track on the, I mean, stealth. Um, the rest is like quite whatever. This one, I don't think it's gonna stack. So you will play with Cat's Eye Elixir, uh, and that's pretty much it. Like you don't think I don't think you use many more things. Uh, no, I mean super situational stuff like all the immolation or like shadow oil some weapon, frost oil some weapon, but that's. Again, some super try-hard stuff I'm not gonna go into, right? So, yeah. I don't think Alchemist Stone, does that, does that even exist? I don't think I've seen, where do you get that shit anyways? I 
I've never seen anybody with that trinket ever, so I don't think the printing but it's the TBC one. But yeah, anyway, who cares? Nobody cares about that trinket, it's too much you know, not worth. Anyway, um moving forward with other consumables, we're going to engineering. What is engineering? Engineering that it is. Right. Uh, ah, yeah. With engine, you need engineering as one profession for sure. It's best in that PvP. By the way, I have 15 minutes left, and I have to go to work. Um, maybe 20 minutes. We'll see, but not more than 20 minutes. Uh, this belt quite good. It shields you for 500 damage. Pro only problem is belt. Only other problem is it can backfire, so it kind of sucks if it backfires. But it's one hour cooldown as well. But again, it's pretty solid. Right, you, you kind of want this belt, especially fighting warriors, right? Any absorption you get, it's pretty much rates you're denying from a warrior, so it's good. More things, uh, rocket boots, you can buy them on the auction house. You don't need to make it yourself, yourself, but yeah, if you make it them yourself, you're gonna be less expensive, I guess. You wanna have both rocket boots. Gnomish fail quite a lot on classic somehow. Uh, and they are less speed increase, but when they break, they don't explode. Goblin ones, uh, they don't fail as much, but when they fail, they explode and you lose them, right? So, yeah. What else? Rocket helmets. Goblin rocket helmet. Pretty much is like a 10 second sub. It can be broken by heartbeat. NCC can be broken by heartbeat, so... Yeah, good luck with that one. But usually, yeah, you're using rocket helmets, Nomi's mind control cards as well. I mean, mind control cards is a lot situational, but sometimes it's good. So I don't deny it, right? On other helmets, you would use Helm of Fire. It's BOE that does like 300 fireball damage if you're gonna burst somebody down. It's quite cool. Mm. Am I forgetting about something else? About the boots, yeah, there's other, I mean, this is this cloak, you're never going to be using it at all, right? It's, it's a cool effect. Um, there's other boots, Swiss boots, you're going to be using them. It's pretty much like a mini, you know, it's it's like a Swiss potion on the boots, but they are leather gear. They don't give any bonus, I mean, they give 10 spirit, and they have like one hour cooldown, so it's super situational, but sometimes you would use them, so, you know, leather working, Swiss boots, quite cheap to make. Um, there, is, there it is. One hour cooldown, but it's like 15 seconds for 40% speed increase, so it's quite good, right? Uh, more cool things you can get uh, the belt from Tailoring, Anti Nova belt. Uh, what is it? Waste. Spider belt, anti nova belt, it's quite good, right? It immobilizes anti immobilizing effects, pretty much takes you away from the nova so you can run away, so it's good. But again, it's 30 minute cooldown, no stats, I mean, intellect, and it's clocked, so it's a quite situational item, right? So, yeah, anyway, moving on, uh, more engineering things you can get, I mean, scopes, whatever, right? Trinkets, dragon link. Good damage pet, um, especially if you're pairing up with a mage for the fire blast or warlock with conflux. Reflectors must have all the reflectors always on the back. You never know when you're gonna use them. Uh, Recombobulator, if you're smart, you're gonna be like unship. I mean, unshipping. Uh, what's it called? Yeah, unshipping. You know, like dispelling ships of your friend. Boom, there it is. Dispel for dispel ships from your friend. Quite good if you're playing, you know, if you don't have ships, dispeller, or you have school on cooldown, or even if you need mana, like if you need HP or mana, you're using that as well, the recombobulator, right? It's, it's, quite, it's super sick, in my opinion. Very underrated, quite expensive to make, but it's very underrated. Uh, and it's not, it's probably like 10 gold per recombobulator, and it has 10 charges, so it's pretty much 1 gold per ship dispel, I would pay for it, you know? And very underrated. You get it on the Iron Mount Tribute if you're farming, so you're gonna get it for free pretty much. Uh, uh, okay, more things. Teleporters, Gadgetzan, or Winter Spring. Pretty much you're ranking in the world, you're just moving locations, right? 
is your ganking plague lands and you wanna just move to Feralas, boom, teleport your gadgets and you get there instantly, right? You don't have to travel around, waste time flying. Um, give me a second on phone. Sí. Okay. Vale. Ya, yo soy tú, ande un minuto y ¿vale? Venga, Dios. No. Venga, Dios. Sorry. Um, again, Dragon Link. If you don't want to make Arcanite Dragon Link, you can make Mithril or the normal one. Just Arcanite Dragon Link is just the mark of quality. It's a Ferrari of the Dragon Link, right? It's a Porsche of the Dragon Link. So if you want to be a Porsche player, you want to be a Ferrari player, and you don't want to be a Volkswagen player, you don't want to be, a, you know, whatever. You just play with Arcanite Dragon Link. Um, Chicken, quite good when it enrages, but easy to kill, so up to you. Death Ray, you can get Death Rays on a Trap. Maybe if the guy is slow with Scattershot, I mean, the guy is slow reacting to the Scattershot, you can also get it, right? Uh, usual combination is Rocket Helmet into Death Ray, that's also a very good combination. Death Ray is pretty much a half, a must have, right? It's, it's very good. Um, what else there? Dragon Gun. Quite shit. Um, mortar, I don't know where the mortar is. But it's pretty much quite good as well. Pretty much like a grenade. More AoE. Got a lot of damage. And good stun, but it's a casting time, I believe, so whatever. And net, very good for like pretty much netting people, right? It's, it's quite sick. Sometimes it backfires and, you know, it's bad, but 90% of the time it's good. You're catching people up, so. It's good. It's very, very good. Uh, what else? Um, cloaking device. You can just pretty much cloaking device, aim shot, and then you're casting your aim shot from the cloaking device. So it's super, super good. And it's also like a mini in this spot, so it's quite good as well. What else? Um, explosive. Arcane bomb. It's super situational, but you know, if you have the gold for it, go, you know, take it. Use it. You need to have gold for it. Same for this one, like, if you got the gold for it, Dark Iron Bomb is a lot of damage, a lot of radius, right, so it's, it's super good, right, else Thorium Grenade is also expensive, but if you got the gold for it, go for it, right, then Zynamite, don't bother with it, just go ahead with, with Grenades or something, right, Bombs, usually don't use Bombs, because Bombs you need to be, Grenades you can cast them while moving, Bombs you need to be st staying when you're casting them. So that's the main difference, right? Green Age, you can move and cast. Bombs, you need to stand still and cast them. Um, more things, Sapper Charges, very good. Uh, Landmines, very situational, but also very good damage output. It's very good if you're holding a choke point, you can put Landmines, people is not gonna bother killing them. Quite good. Um, explosive Ships, don't think it's very, it's worth, not worth the use. Flash bombs quite good against uh, hunters versus their pets. You can get rid of their pet by just using flash bomb, right? Um, or against feral druids, if they are on you, you can just flash bomb them away. But it's quite uh, quite expensive to make, and yeah, it takes a lot of time to farm the material. So yeah, I don't know, man. What else? Uh, alarm robot. Alarm robot. No mission alarm robot is quite good. Warden Launcher is also quite good as well. Deflectors, there's like a trick where you can just bind, you can make a material like slash use Goblin Sapper Charge, slash use Flame Deflector, right? Pretty much you're gonna nullify the damage of Sapper Charge you're gonna do yourself. Um, but yeah, in general, the, the Mortars, right? Mortars is like, you don't use it for the damage at all, you use it for the stun. It's a Goblin Mortar somewhere, I don't know where it is, but yeah, it's use it for the stun as a trinket, it's a trinket, right? So it's, it's quite good. Um, alarm robot. It detects. It has quite a huge stealth detection, but again, the material required to make it it's insanely expensive, so it's not worth, right? Um, and then this combo ray they used to dismount, but they don't anymore. So you can still use them onto a melee guy to reduce a lot of damage, but I don't think it's worth. Um, besides that, nothing much more. I think I'm missing. We're missing the um, 
magic dust if you're hard you can just go to the undead zone and do some undead quest that gives you a mini version of the magic dust which is pretty much the same but for free it's only one quest per player so it's five of them it's quite good don't remember the name um yeah and you get uh yeah you get just five magic that's for magic dust for free right um again magic dust is quite expensive per server but it's really good 10 second 10 second sleep it really depends if you're in combat if you're in not depends on the heartbeat dep depends on everything but it's almost instant cast and it's just so OP. that's why it is so expensive that's also very expensive because it's hard to farm so yep uh what else we're talking about uh, bandaging and first aid um oh, yeah i forgot the one one consumable which I don't know what is it, right? It's like special elixirs. Well, there's somewhere is the elixir of poison resistance, which I don't know what is that, but there is somewhere which pretty much cancels your poisons, right? So if you're fighting rogues or you're fighting hunters, uh, you can just get rid of their poisons instantly by just using elixir of poison resistance. Uh, and it doesn't share cooldown with any other elixir or potion. There it is uh so yeah this is quite good it doesn't share any cooldown it, it, it cures at the four potions so it's quite op uh but it's uh, the materials got expensive to make so yeah good luck with that one magic resistance potion quite cheap very underrated to fight uh, casters so that's quite cheap if you don't have any other resources buy magic resistance potions you're not gonna be the same as using a free action potion or a leap or whatever you need, right? Or the rest of it, but you're still gonna be uh, quite tanky because res resistance is very OP on classic. So it's a very good consumable to use, especially if you're not playing with a paladin or with a shaman that can put totems because it doesn't scale with totem, right? It doesn't stack with the totems. Um, more things. Uh, I talked about magic dust, I talked about engineering, I talked about other consumables. Did I talk about I mean pet food, whatever, right? Arrows, you probably wanna be using these ones, right? Thorium arrows, you're gonna be doing so much damage. It's not worth to be farming lower black rock spire arrows. But again, this is like what? One gold a stack. If you have gold, just buy them. They're, they're gonna be substantial increase amount of damage. Uh, but if you can't, uh, just, just buy the level 40 ones, it's, quite, it's whatever. Mm. And I don't think I'm forgetting anything, I mean, maybe potions, I talked about them. I don't think I'm forgetting anything, guys. Does anybody need anything else? I have to go very soon, boys. Um, oh yeah, blacksmithing, that's the second profession you want to get. Um, there's a quest, I don't know how it's called, Grimmeling Mithril Insignia, right? Um, and also you're gonna make gold with it because you're gonna be selling weapon chains left and right because of people ranking. Grimmeling Mithril Insignia. This one, it's only blacksmithing, only trinket, right? It's a quest from blacksmithing. Um, it's not for the armor or the resistances, but it's for the theory immune. Right, so you wanna get that. You actually wanna get that. Hunters has have no anti fear whatsoever. So this pretty much makes hunters very very good. However, it's like a 30 minute, 20, 10 minute cooldown, not so bad actually. So they makes hunt. This makes hunters pretty good. But again, you actually gonna have to drop your gathering profession in order to have this one, right? So yeah, engineering blacksmithing is the best in slot professions for classic because this trinket from blacksmithing you can only have it from blacksmithing so yep up to you boys um more things uh skull of impending doom right uh just do the quest in badlands Ulderman, whatever just google it um it got nerfed so i mean nerf they they buffed the skull a little bit so it wouldn't do like max uh, amount of damage all the time so it's quite better right now it's pretty much super exorcists, right? Before they get applied to you. Uh, goblin, no, medicine pouch. 
medicine pouch is also quite good, right? You need to grind the uh, honored with the four books, four book reputation. I believe it requires honored, right? But I don't know. I think it requires honored reputation. Mm, let me see. Comments. Blah, blah, blah. Honor. Uh, you have to be honored with Timber Maw. So pretty much you need to be honored with Timber Maw. 500 healing, self healing is quite good over time. So, I mean, 500, no, it's 10. It's 1k healing actually, not 500. Never mind, it's quite good. It's also with stamina. More stuff you wanna get, you wanna get. Um, uh, what was the name of the item one? Oh yeah, if you're alliance. If you have a healer, I don't remember. If you have a healer on your alliance, you want to get this one. You can just equip and unequip the trinket all the time to fish for a proc. You're probably gonna, gonna get 100 DPS, but sometimes it's worth to have 100 DPS on you. Like it's damage per second you're gonna be losing, but again, it's pretty much gonna make you immune to CCs and you can just get rid of it. Just like queuing it after a faint death, and you can just get rid of it, right? So it's pretty much anti ship, anti whatever. So it's pretty pretty good, pretty solid on a hunter. And again, if you just you're getting kidnapped or whatever, you wanna kill yourself, you just have to equip this item and then just go and spirit press or whatever, right? Pretty good if you're getting kidnapped actually, it's your alliance. But that's more towards battlegrounds. Like some healers would get kidnapped on a base, right? Just like equip the trinket and kill yourself, so you can just get a free resurrection. Um. Oh yeah, mounting gear, carrot on a stick. Carrot on a stick, quite good. Um, other consumables, root to whipper root tuber. Ripper Retuber, uh, HP consumable, doesn't share cooldown with potions, right? It shares cooldown with hellstones, etc. Uh, if you don't have this, you're farming these Ripper Retubers in Felwood. You need to find, it's only in Felwood, by the way. Um, you can farm them, and also, you can, when, while you are farming Ripper Retuber, you can also farm Knight Dragon's Breath, which is like kind of the lesser brother for HP, but it also gives mana, right? So. Nice Dragon Breath, Whipper Retour, they're quite solid for Hunter PvP, right? Alternative, you can get this as well. Um, Day of the Life. No, not this one. What is the name? Uh, Day of Lilies, sorry. This one. Uh, this is a neck that, co that conjures a Lily Root, right? Uh, conjure Lily Root that restores mana and HP, but you can only make one every one hour, so it's kind of whatever. It's quite a good thing to have, though, like, it's, uh, you know, if you make a macro, just use it and that's it. It's cool. Um, more things, um, not life-giving gem, lifestone, BOE trinket, quite cheap on the auction house. It's not for the health per five, but it's pretty much for the mini healing potion I can get, restoring 300 to 700 HP. Every time you cross with a warlock, every time you cross, yeah, when you're ranking, every time you cross with a warlock, buy a hellstone, buy a soulstone. If you cross with a mage, buy buffs, buy food, buy water. If you cross with a priest, buy buffs always. Druid, same, get buffs, okay? Any class, ask them for buffs, you cross with them, always. Super nice to have when you're ranking. And then that's pretty much it. Like I don't think I can do much more things for you guys tonight. I have to go to work like now. Um, yep. Mm. 